Today we've got a crazy story of an entitled dad letting their kid poo in a bag and then complain to store staff that they did nothing wrong. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, I was put under a citizen's arrest over Gunpla. So this starts during the spring break last year when I did some Gundam customs for extra money while mowing people's lawns and washing some cars here and there. How the city is laid out? My house was on the upper northwest side of the city I live in. This is downtown Houston and the only bit of city in at least 100 to 190 miles from any other city like Dallas. So I had my prices at a firm price so I can pay for gas and for my Gunpla. Gunpla stands for Gundam Plastic Model, and they're just small model kits of Gunpla from their respective shows. But whatever, back to the story. I enter the Target I usually go to to look at their Gunpla stock and see what I could buy, and like usual they had some high grade kits from the range from HG Cars Red Zaku, a Xeon mobile suit but mainly used as a grunt, a couple of Battlelog Gunpla kits like the Barbatoris, the Tanjiro statue kit, Deku statue kit, a Ultra Instinct Goku model kit, and a Naruto model kit. I go to grab the high grade strike Freedom Gundam, the last one by the way, for an ancient Egyptian type of custom. It was a horror style of custom, and I had to heavily modify the head. I go to the self checkout line so I can buy it, and I feel something tugging at my shirt, and I turn around as I see this 5 foot 4, probably middle aged or 40 year old woman who was surprisingly fit for her age, and this convo happens. What is that you have if you don't mind me asking? I say I don't mind, and it's a model kit for a custom I'm doing for a client. They say oh is it like Legos? I say yes, but it's from Japan. I then start laughing as some of the other guys that were around me heard it and also chuckled, and this somewhat irritated her. She said oh it's one of those filthy slurs that started COVID. Those people ruined our lives forever and they're the ones to blame. Go put that back and go get something real. I didn't budge because I'm a 6 foot man and I'm not frail and I was in swimming as a sport and had since quit because of personal issues. I was next in line for the self checkout and she grabbed me and forced me into a citizen's arrest for her assuming I'm a certain word that some YouTubers who I know of, in case they're reading this, and just agreed because I could feel an anxiety attack come up. My anxiety like others are vastly different, my hands start shaking. I start stuttering, some slight sweating, and my mind starts to race. So I sit down next to the small little refrigerators and one of the guys who chuckled decided to stay and sit with me because he has a stepson with anxiety while the lady called the cops and we all waited. When the cops got there, they asked for her side first while what seems to be a newbie pulled out his cuffs and was ready to arrest me. Until the guy who stayed told him mine and his side and the two cops switched roles as the female cop insisted on arresting me anyways. But thank God that the older female cops had to switch places, and the man explained what happened since I was getting dangerously close to my anxiety attack, and she asked for my name and what I was doing, and I told her and showed her the kit, and the man also mentioned that I have anxiety and wasn't able to answer most of the questions being asked, and she automatically knew and told the newbie, I'll call the older female cop Queen because she looked like a combination of Queen B from R.I.D. 2015 and Bumblebee from Young Justice Invasion. Queen tells the lady I did nothing wrong and was fined for wasting officers time and to please leave the property and me alone. She of course got angry and slapped Queen on the face and she was charged with assaulting an officer and she was quickly arrested and Queen tells the newbie to take her to the cruiser outside and she does so. Queen then asks what's my favorite soda and I say it's Mountain Dew and she offers to buy both for me. I cry and smile because it was a very kind thing to do, especially from a cop, and she hugged me and I was happy for it and I went back home. It's honestly such a shame for OP that when the cops finally did show up here, they were a bit brash in trying to handle the situation, almost to the point of trying to arrest OP for no good reason at all. Thankfully the cop OP called Queen had their wits about them and handled it well. Our next story is, I paid for it, I'll eat it. So today I was walking back from this college program I'm part of, extra classes. I was getting back from a hard math test I wasn't expecting. My classes finished early, 2.30, and started a slow walk home. By the time I got to the store at around 3ish, I bought myself a drink and a caramel chocolate bar as a reward for the test. Chocolate bars and drinks are not common for me, I eat them as a reward or gift. As I was walking home, I saw a kid, four, maybe five, running around, then he saw I had chocolate as I was snapping off a piece. 
He ran back to his mom, standard Karen blonde haircut and a I want the manager atmosphere, and heard him say, Mommy, mommy, that kid has chocolate. Can I have chocolate, please? I put on some earbuds because the main road was getting too loud. I thought that's it. The kid will keep running around and not bothering me. By what I understand, the kid asked a few more times and got on her nerves around like 10 minutes later. I hear a loud and quick heel clacking towards me. Ahem. I ignore it. She taps me on my shoulder. Ahem, I'm talking to you. I said, can I help you, ma'am? She said, give me the chocolate you have. My son wants it. I said, sorry, I don't have much left and I don't buy it often and I want to eat the rest of it. Sorry. The kid, not entitled now by the side of his mom, says, Mom, can I have the chocolate now? The entitled parent says, give it to me. I'm older, I need it, my son needs it, you need to listen to me. At this point, I wanted to listen to my music and continue walking home. I said, no. She says, get back, I'm not done talking to you. She tried to grab my shoulder, but her arm slipped. I checked the kid was running around not near me and not in earshot. I said respectfully, please piss off and don't touch me. I don't like to be touched. She stopped dead in her tracks and screeched. I didn't hear what she said. I walked away quite quickly because I didn't like the situation. I think all things considered OP handled this pretty well. If somebody's getting into your face like that, I mean, you have every right to be aggressive, quick and curt. And hopefully, you know, snapping back a little bit like that might shut some people up. This next story is, surprise visits are a hard no from me. Apparently that makes me entitled. My mother has always had a hard time with boundaries. Growing up, she was fond of telling me it was her room because it was her house and she could come and go as she pleased and snoop through my space at will. Same with my car or my phone or anything else. No matter if I was paying for it with my money or not, she had rights to everything. After I got married and moved across the country, she followed a year later to be close in case I needed her. She settled in a town about an hour away and I saw her a few times a month. She was generally a good grandmother, very involved and nobody could say she didn't love my daughter a ton. She was given a key to my house for various reasons and didn't abuse it too much but she had a hard time recognizing that I was an adult and made the rules for my own child, not her. Mild things like wanting to hand feed my seven year old and telling me I should allow things that I didn't, arguing with me in front of her about my rules, that kind of stuff. After I separated from my ex-husband and moved into my own house with my daughter, she was again given a key for emergencies and this is when she started to cross some lines. She would go shopping and drop things off at my house, still an hour away from her own house, and just leave bags of things in various places. She's always been a bit of a compulsive shopper and a hoarder, if I'm being honest, but these things were usually useful. Cases of paper towels, bottles of laundry detergent, piles of conditioner, that kind of thing. But she would just show up unannounced and leave things in my house, usually in my unfinished basement floor. The basement flooded every time it rained for a half hour and these things frequently got wet or ruined. I asked her to stop multiple times because I was tired of throwing away soaked rolls of toilet paper, but she continued doing it the whole time I lived there. Frustrating. Then I moved back across the country. She again came with me, actually living in my house for a few months, until she could find her own. This was a disaster. Her old space invading behavior from my childhood came roaring back. She'd barge in my bedroom and bathroom without knocking. She'd argue with me about my parenting and openly disparage me to my child when I wasn't around. She'd buy 15 bottles of dishwashing liquid because they were on sale and get angry when I told her I didn't need them. I asked her to escalate her move out for the sake of our relationship. She found her own place but kept the key to my house. Her random drop-ins increased to multiple times a week. I'd come home to whatever random haul that she brought that day just sitting on my table, or she'd need to borrow a carving knife and just let herself in while I was at work to grab it. I'd be in the shower and get out to find her in my kitchen, having not gotten an answer when she knocked, so just letting herself in with her key. I asked her to stop several times. I don't like unannounced visitors and I hate knowing someone was in my house while I was not there. She continued unabated, 
She let herself in at one point and went through my daughter's things, which prompted my daughter to ask me if she could confront her grandmother and ask her not to do that again. My mother went ballistic and said she'd give the key back, but never did. She continued to show up randomly, but now saying she knew she should have called first and just forgot. My daughter and I moved again last summer. I was adamant my mother not be given a key to this house or the security code. She had continued to show up randomly. My significant other opened the door a few times, mostly because he isn't as good at hiding as my daughter and I are. If he's not home, we don't answer. She showed up unannounced last week with stuff for Valentine's Day. I work from home, so I was here. I was on a conference call, so I didn't go to the door. My significant other happened to be home and opened it for her, so she came in and chattered for 10 minutes and then left. It was the last straw for me. I'm over these surprise visits, especially when I'm working and my bosses can hear my dogs going nuts because someone new is here. So I text her and tell her for the hundredth time to stop. I don't care what the occasion is or what she just had to drop off. Stop showing up in my house unannounced. This is a boundary she needs to respect. And she loses her mind. I'm a controlling, entitled brat who can't tell her what to do. She was just trying to do something nice for Valentine's Day. She hopes I have a child so hateful and mean one day. I can bet my sweet butt she won't do anything else for me ever. She's having surgery next week and needed to talk about it with me. She has a very busy schedule that day and lots of places to go, so that's why she couldn't call or text me first. She planned on just leaving the candy on the front porch, but my significant other opened the door so it's his fault. And on and on and on. I finally told her I wouldn't be reading or responding any further. She responded with, Good. The silence these last 10 plus days has been golden. But I feel like the teenager in a horror movie who mistakenly thinks the axe murderer is gone, only for them to pop out of the closet later. Yeah, sadly I think OP just initiated like a bit of a cool down period, where the mother's gone into recess and hiding for a little while, until they build up enough of an intolerance of not dropping by, and they go right back to it. Our next story is, Mommy Creature Steals Her Kid's Pokemon Cards. For those of you that haven't read my posts, I sell comics, cards, and other collectibles. I hate that word. I've had two stores and done flea markets for close to 35 years. The one thing I've dealt with over the years are parents. Usually the mommy, I don't call them mothers. On this fine day, a father and his three kids saw my stand and saw the evil Pokemon cards. At the time, $4, 3 for 10, he bought the three kids each a pack. Being kids, they ran over to mommy to show them what their father got them. She was not pleased, not pleased at all. She yelled at the father, this is a direct quote, Are you freaking nuts? And ripped the cards out of the kids' hands. Well, now they're crying and the she-beasts now tells them to shut up. She storms over to my booth and demands her money back. I told her no. She gets louder and demands her money again. Again, I tell her no. I told her that she didn't buy those cards, and from what I've seen, she stole those cards from those children. She tells me that she's their mother and wants their money back now. Nope, I don't know if that's true. I then point to the no refund, exchanges only, except for cards, sign on my wall. I told her that I would exchange them for $10 worth of anything else. I also told her that the only reason I was willing to exchange the cards was that they didn't leave my sight. This is due to counterfeit cards. It's a major issue with Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon and I've been screwed over because a parent bought my cards and returned fake ones. She said that there was nothing here that she wanted them to have. I said to her that there was a garbage can 20 feet away and she could toss them there. When she saw that I wasn't budging, she tried a new tactic. I'll be cleaning them up all day. I replied, you know ma'am, there's 30 cards there. If it's going to take you all day to clean them up, you really should get some medical help. I don't know what caused her jaw to drop further, my response, or her husband laughing. She yelled at him once again, you think that was funny? Yes, act like a witch, get treated like a witch. Wasn't witch, but don't really know the rules here. He grabs the cards from her and heads them back to the kids who are still crying. She storms off. The guy apologizes to me, and I tell him I'm used to this behavior. Turns out she wanted something in the booth across from me and the vendor didn't take credit cards. 
She didn't have enough cash, and the $10 he gave me was the last of his cash, so she couldn't get it. Guy did have a credit card, which I offered to take instead, but he said no. She could deal with it. Shame is, that's not unusual. Isn't it sad when you hear a situation where you almost think to yourself, these kids who just want to play with Pokemon cards are probably the more mature party here? Like, this mom was clearly so spoiled and titled. I mean, it sounded like they were there to get her some toys. Maybe pick her up a Happy Meal on the way home. This next story is entitled Parent Parks in My Driveway. I own a house a couple houses down from a school, so this was bound to happen eventually. When it's time for the kids to go home, my street is lined bumper to bumper with parents to pick up their kids. The sidewalks are full of families who walk all the way to their cars. I often have to pick up balloons, snack packaging, old homework worksheets, and general garbage that the kids drop. If you're trying to get home around the time school lets out, there's no way you're going to be able to get there before the blockade the parents make is gone. This has been a problem the few years we've lived here. There's two places the kids let out, my street which is a small cul-de-sac with the school at the top, and a main road that's open all the way down to a baseball park with a wider road to allow street parking and two-way driving. Obviously if you can't find parking, the tiny residential road isn't the way to go. There's three cars in my home, my car, my roommate's car, and my husband's utility van, which she parks on the road to avoid blocking our roommate since she's frequently in and out. Fridays, today, I work from home. So when I finished work, I poked my head out the window to look at my fruit tree I have near my driveway. It's spring, I keep excitedly looking for blooms, and I notice a big white Buick SUV in the middle of my driveway blocking both spots for my car, which my husband was using since I was home, and my roommate's spot. Honestly, why would you park in somebody's driveway? So on top of these entitled parents blocking up our small residential road, this person decided to take up a private residence's driveway. I got on the phone with a non-emergency police line and took pictures of the vehicle and plate. Then I got my husband's keys and backed his vehicle up to block the SUV into my driveway, and I waited. Fifteen minutes later, the mom, big eye sunglasses, big old diamonds on her jewelry, and wearing athleisure, and she comes around to hop in the driver's seat and smiles and waves at me sitting on my steps. Honestly, she probably thought I was the homeowner's kid or something, because I'm in my early 20s rather than the homeowner. She said, hi, hope you don't mind. I said, you're trespassing. Why would you park in a private driveway? She said, sorry, won't do it again. We were just leaving. She was really being dismissive and avoiding eye contact despite taking the sunglasses off. I said, I don't care. You have no right to park in my property. I'm on the phone with the police. She said it was just for a second, I was just picking up my daughter. I said it doesn't matter, you don't live here, you don't park here. At this point, I realized the non-emergency police aren't going to pick up. So I decided to hang up and mess with her a bit. She got in her SUV and dismissively waved at me. So I got in my vehicle that was blocking her in and waited, pretending to still be on the phone. She starts trying to back out of my driveway because they left a little bit of gap between my utility van and my neighbor's car but it was definitely too small for this Buick. I would like to point out that this vehicle has a scuffed front bumper, so I have a feeling she has no spatial awareness outside of her backup camera. Every time she backed up, I honked, still pretending to be on the phone. She tried again, I honked again. She looked at my grass and I was about to start recording her in case she tried to go through my front yard. I honked again. If she kept trying to back out and hit my big utility van, she would certainly lose. She gets out of her SUV and comes up to my van, recognizing she can't do anything without making it far worse for herself. Her face was visibly patchy from the distress, and she asked again, Are you really calling the police? I said, Yes, you're illegally parked on my private property. That's illegal. I don't care if it's for five seconds. Don't freaking do it. You don't live here. Her kid got out of the car, and I decided that was enough. So I waited for her to get back in her SUV, and I parked my van back in its rightful spot and let her out. After that, I called the school and gave them the license plate number. Nothing will probably come of it, but I don't think she'll park in someone's driveway again anytime soon. I'll take the jerk points because there's a child involved, but you shouldn't put your child in situations like this anyways. 
How much you want to bet even after this whole experience, she's willing to gamble trying somebody else's driveway? A lot of people still won't be petty enough to block them in and stay online with a non-emergency phone number. Our next story is, is it fair mom doesn't let me out after certain times? Hiya, I'm 17 and my mom always makes sure I ask her to go out. It was 5.30pm and I asked if I could walk to my dad's and come back a bit later, only about a mile away. And as expected, she shouted at me saying no, I shouldn't be walking in the dark. This usually happens at about any time past 4.30, but I feel at 17, I should be able to decide when I go to my dad's, considering I'm legally old enough to have a driving license. Is it unfair? Definitely fair that she wants you to check with her before you go out. At 5.30pm if you want to go to your dad's and come back only a bit later, and she freaks out? Yeah, definitely not fair. This next story is, it's a shared birthday, the Freak You Larry story. So, I'm an adult now and have since gone no contact with my bio dad's, Larry's, side of the family. My parents got divorced when I was in preschool because he thought it would be smart to sleep with the moms of the kids he would take me and my brother to have playdates with. She caught on after the fact that he'd refused to take her with to birthday parties. Her and us went to live with our grandma and great grandma and he got to keep the house and dog. The reasons were because when the divorce was going on, he decided to stop making payments thinking she would try and take it. Funny thing was she hated that house and never wanted him to buy it, so he ended up losing the house and had to move into a crappy apartment downtown with a dog that wasn't house trained which my mom also hated. Throughout my childhood, he would make the attempt to be the favorite parent by spending all of his cash taking us to zoos and museums and stuff. But honestly, while the experiences themselves were fun, he didn't really take the time to build a relationship during those custody weekends. Looking back, there was also a level of favoritism, as he would buy him all the Star Wars and G.I. Joe a little boy could ask for, and I was supposed to be content with little pink princesses and Barbies, which as a tomboyish kid was unappealing. He would try and force me to wear pink girly things and would even tell me he'd have my mom make me wear them to school which would never happen. Another thing he caused was that I was a pretty bad picky eater, and his response was to physically place my toys in the trash unless I ate, which would only make me cry. He also once spanked me outside a restaurant because I wouldn't eat dinner. Now, I don't disapprove the use of spanking, but personally it wasn't an appropriate way to deal with the issue, as even today, I still somewhat have a fear of certain foods. Mostly foods with uncased grounded meats like tacos and burgers, to the point where my body will try to reject it even if I think it tastes good. His entitlement to my affection sort of started when I developed father-daughter relationships with my stepfather, Dan. He was at the time a biker. He stopped doing club stuff after he found out the brotherhood thing was all BS. A redneck guy my mom met at a bar. We moved in with him to his little ranch house the summer before first grade. He didn't want to be a dad, but he was never a jerk about it, so everything was all great, with the exception that my mom's happiness made Larry jealous. He had way more to offer on the basis of providing for us. A clean home, out in the country? While Larry was a slob, wherever car he ever had would be filled with trash. He was also a bit of a drunk. One time I accidentally saw his tiny junk sticking out of his boxer while he was passed out in his bed, but I didn't think to tell anyone at the time. My mom would call CPS, but he would just make us clean the house just before the date that they told him they'd come, so nothing became of it and apparently according to my brother, who decided he wanted to continue playing both sides, that he's even gotten worse, blossoming into a full-blown hoarder. One time when we were little, Larry tried bribing some bikers from a different group, thinking that, oh, you're a different club, so you guys are enemies to hurt Dan who luckily were actually his friends who told him about it, which ended with Dan beating the crap out of Larry because doing that would have put his own children in danger. Now, my relationship with Dan didn't really build until I started taking an interest in helping out in his shop, and I brought back some of the things he loved in his abusive childhood. He basically grew up in an episode of Hoarders, which was anime. We started watching shows like One Punch Man, Trigun, Gundam, Dragon Ball, all that shonen stuff that would have been made fun of at school for when he was a kid in his rural town. After a while, I stopped going to Larry's, which he ended up throwing a hissy fit, threatening to take my mom to court even though I was at that age where I could technically choose according to my state's law. 
He tried guilt tripping me into feeling bad for not going to see my half sister that was caused by a one night stand who he now lives with, which I honestly just didn't care, I just didn't want him to start a custody battle. After that I just used him to buy me stuff and played angsty teenager because screw it, if he wants to play games, I'll play. There were some things I couldn't get from him, like he wouldn't give me money towards a vehicle I wanted because it was a Chevy that wasn't even a new one. It was a 2000 S10 me and Dan fixed up that had a bad rear differential that we paid a little over a grand for that I still have. Dan has Chevys and Chevy parts, so it would be easier to maintain whenever anything broke. Leary wanted his name on the Title II, which my brother fell and now has no car because Larry decided he needed to take his sons instead of buying another after his broke down. What really showed me how much he cared was the last birthday party. Now, my half-sister is almost exactly 10 years younger than me by a few days, so he thought it would be great to do a shared birthday, which was really her party with my name attached to it. The only thing I got was a gift card he bought in front of me an hour before the party itself. Which yeah, that screams I love you, but the relationship was dead anyways. And at the party itself, I literally hid away in a closet to see how long it would take for someone to notice and it honestly made me cry. Not because he didn't care about me, I was over that, but because he did a half-hearted job trying to convince other people he cared and refusing to just let me go. After that I finally got the excuse to not go anymore, yay COVID, but I still had to deal with some of his BS. Like he'd still try to pit me as a dependent in his taxes and that I'm still on his TRICARE health insurance plan that I didn't know about, which means that my asthma diagnosis, which would have normally have been covered by my mother's Medicare, is being compromised by the fact that it's not a TRICARE approved hospital. And now I owe them money I don't have. At some point, I think it's just inevitable that you completely cut your father off because they just clearly do not care. They might care just the littlest degree, if that, and that might just be them putting minor effort in to pretend. Also, do you guys also believe in spanking, or is it totally reprehensible? I'd like to know what you guys think. Our next story is, Dad let his kid poo in a bag, complains to head office that he did nothing wrong. Hi, so this isn't a skit from Superstore and I don't work in Cloud9, but on this day, I really felt that my store would fit there perfectly. I work in a discount retailer as a manager, so it was a Saturday morning and it's a very busy day. All colleagues are on tills and I'm on my break. All of a sudden, the guard walks into the canteen and says that a customer complained that there's a girl taking a poo while his dad is holding the bag in the middle of the store. I got very confused when I heard him say that and asked him to repeat that again. There is no way that could be a real situation. I then asked him to kick them out as they are way out of line. He refuses. Another issue? Our guards are useless. Just for show. We both walk to the veg section and he points at the dad and two kids. Luckily the bag was already hidden in the buggy so I approach them while the guard just stands there like a lemon. I say, so a customer and our guard has seen your kid take a poo in a bag, so I'll need to ask you to leave the store. The guy says, wait, why? What did I do wrong? I said, you don't see anything wrong with pooping in the middle of the store? It's unhygienic, it's disgusting, and it's just wrong. We have operational toilets, you could have asked someone to take you to them without putting any of us in this situation. After I explained to him that what he did is wrong, he finally understood that he won't be allowed to continue his shop. I lead him and the kids out. An elderly customer approached me afterwards, saying that she's never seen anything like this in her life and is glad that someone dealt with it so swiftly. I thanked the lady for the compliment and thought the situation was behind us. It was the main topic for the weekend in our store. Today I walked in for my shift and my manager pulls me aside and says that the poop in the bag man complained to the head office, but twisted the story in his own way saying that he was kicked out without a valid reason, that he did nothing wrong, cause there were no available toilets and staff refused to help, so he had to do what any dad would do, that I should be reprimanded that I embarrassed him. Me and my managers had a laugh about it. I wrote a statement and gave timestamps of our CCTV and we left it at that. The story of the poop in the bag man will carry on forever now. I'll make sure no one will forget it. I just don't understand the thought process, like, Did they have like one of those 
produce bags? Did they carry around like doggy bags with them? How were they A, so prepared for the situation, and B, so nonplussed about it? Like, d- is this a regular thing? They're like, ah, forget it. We don't want to make it all the way to the bathroom. Just go in this bag. Also, I just realized, how do they wipe? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.